All right, pre-trade rapture moment number 26. I have kind of an interesting setting for this one today, here by the ocean, off the coast of uh, so southeastern Maine. Of course, the southwestern part of Maine, there really isn't any ocean over there, so. But the uh, question comes up, what happens to children at the rapture? Well, uh, Romans 4, verse 15 says, Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So, we understand from the Bible that children do not go to hell if they die under the age of accountability because they don't know. There's no law there, so there's no transgression. They are guiltless before God, so they go to heaven when they die. So the question comes up, if the dead in Christ rise first, and we which are alive and remain are caught up together with them in the clouds, what happens to the children? Now there are basically two schools of thought on this. Number one, you have all the young children, all children under the age of accountability, all of them go to heaven with the saints. The other one is that only those children with one or both saved parents will go. You say, what's the scripture for that? Well, let me show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12 through 16 says, But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother that hath, hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Okay, that's where this teaching will come from. It says here, verse 15, But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Okay. So you can see there where this theory comes from. You know, if there are no saved parents in the family, then the children are unclean, according to that passage. But let me show you why that theory, they say, so therefore then, you know, somebody, at least one person had to be saved in order to have the children raptured. Let me show you why I don't agree with that. Okay? If you would have a one-year-old baby living at the time of the rapture, but if they lived through the seven years, they'd still be eight years old. More than likely still under the age of accountability. So, kind of makes a problem there. But uh, there's a bunch of other reasons why I believe that all babies are going to be leaving. And I'm going to get into that in this study. But one of the other objections is people say, but didn't God kill babies in the flood in the days of Noah and also in Sodom and Gomorrah when he burned the cities? All right. Let's look about that. Genesis chapter 6, verses 4 and 5 says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children. Okay, so there were little children back then. To them the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, what was the wickedness? What did it have to do with? It had to do with the sons of God coming in under, under the daughters of men. And you can disagree with it all you want to, but the fact is, you study it in the Old Testament, the only reference to sons of God in the Old Testament are angels in heaven. All right? Job chapter 1. Look it up. But let's see Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. It says here, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So we have a different situation back there in the, in the flood in the days of Noah. What was going on? All flesh was corrupt. So therefore, because of this intermingling with the, the angels, the sons of God, the Lord looked down and he said, Okay, I can't let these people live any longer. Okay, not the same thing as today. Today, there are people that are just as lost as you could be, but they haven't intermingled with angels. So, it's not that all flesh has corrupted his way upon the earth right now. It was in the days of Noah. Okay? You say, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Genesis 13, 13 says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So you can see that there, that they were sinners before the Lord, and it wasn't in hospitality. Don't believe that one that the Sodomites try to put out. Genesis chapter 18, verse 20 through 23 says, 
And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And of course you know the story, if you've read the, that passage there, he says, if I can find 50, if I can find 40, and he works his way down to 10. If, if, if Abraham could have found 10 righteous men, God would have spared Sodom and Gomorrah. He couldn't, so God didn't. But uh, Genesis 19, verses 12 through 14 says, And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in this city, bring them out of this place? For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out, and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. So they just laughed at him, basically, is what the whole thing was. But I want you to notice two different things here. First of all, was the seed corrupted in Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes. Why? Well, they might not have been inter, you know, messing around with angels, sons of God there. That's not mentioned. But the fact is, with sodomy, there's probably all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases going on, and they're messing around and messing around, and you know, who knows what these children had in them. Okay, so yeah, God had to come in and destroy that. It's not the same thing as the rapture. All right, that's very important to get. Secondly, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, was it worldwide or local? Local. It was not a worldwide judgment, as it was in the days of Noah, and as it will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Very important to understand that. Now, here's why I believe that all babies are leaving at the rapture. Okay? Why is there such hatred for saved people in the time of Jacob's trouble. People that have the testimony of Jesus and keep the word of God, there's a lot of hatred for them in the future. Why? What's going on there? What event happens that brings such hatred? And I know there are a lot of people out there that are anti-Christian, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I drive around a truck with gospel things on it, nobody's running me off the road, nobody's trying to cut my head off or anything, you know? Yeah, there are anti-Christian people, but it's not at this level yet. What makes this level happen? Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Probably familiar with this too, but we'll just read it. It says here, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should yet rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay, John 16, verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. All right, very true. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, just another verse to show this, this hatred for the saved people. It says here, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So you see there are three different passages where there's such hatred for saved people in the time of Jacob's trouble. Just incredible hatred. You know, what causes it? Well, I believe it's going to be the rapture and all the babies leaving with us. They're going to blame it on us, Bible-believing Christians. They're going to say it was a terrorist attack and that we somehow got rid of the babies. Think about that. You say, what about uh, newborn, or what about, you know, are there mentions of children or small babies in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah. But look at the reference. Matthew chapter 24, verse 19 says here, And woe unto them that are with child... And unto them that give suck in those days. Are those children that have been three, four, five years old? No. Those children are newborn babies. So the children could be removed at the rapture and babies born after that. All right? And they're born into that time, so sorry, there's not much you can do for them. But interesting here, Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17, another little interesting point. It says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. 
Where is there a mention of children? You say, well, small. Yeah, but the thing is, the opposite of a small child is not a great adult. It would be a big adult. Why would it say small and great? I think it's talking about position in society, small and great. There's no mention of children. And why are they taking the mark? To buy or sell? Why would a young child be concerned about buying and selling? Could it be that there are no children in that time? Very possible. And again, that would explain the intense hatred towards saved people at that point in time. Now I'm going to get you into one final verse of Scripture here, and this is a key. Okay, this is key to understanding this whole thing. And I've read through this thing. I've taught through it. You know, I've done expository studies on it and things. And I mean, you know, I've basically I was teaching it the wrong way, really, honestly, because as I was doing this study, I prayed about this thing and I went over it, and I just poured over the Scripture and just, Lord, was this? What is this really saying? And I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now the traditional way you explain that is you say, people in the world are saying that they want peace and safety, and the time of Jacob's trouble comes, and they don't escape it. Okay, they don't get out in the rapture. That's the traditional explanation. But, actually look at the verse. When they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Wait a second. Travail upon a woman with child, when a woman is getting ready, when she's having her labor pains, is that destruction coming upon her? No. That's the time she's been waiting for for nine months. You know? Unless it's premature, then it's sooner. <laughs> but the point is, it's not destruction that's coming upon her. Why is it saying there, as travail upon a woman with child? I'm going to give you the uh, interpretation here that I believe is the right one in light of this thing of children leaving. When they shall say, who's the they? The parents. Specifically, so the mother. What do parents want most for their baby? Peace and safety. Stick with me here. Peace and safety. You know, shh, the baby's sleeping. Shh, just shh. They put the baby in a crib with all the, everything's all padded and everything else so the baby can't roll over and all this, put pillows in so that they can't roll over and lay on their face and things. They want peace and safety. They say, the parents say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. What would the destruction be? The baby leaves. Would that not be destruction? And what would that cause with the mother? It would cause uh, travail, wouldn't it? Travail upon a woman with child. Now we think with child being like, you know, the modern word is pregnant, but could it also be said woman with child is a woman that has a child? That the child's born, the child's in a crib or whatever, she has a child, she is with child. See? The travail comes upon that woman. Why? Because sudden destruction came. The baby left. And what happens? They, the parents, shall not escape. The baby left. It's the sudden destruction. It causes travail, and they don't escape. The lost parents. Hmm. So in the end, what do I believe? Well, I can't be 100% dogmatic about it. I can't say it's definitely proven from Scripture. But what I can say is it definitely looks like all the babies under the age of accountability are leaving. And you think about what's going to happen as a result of that. You think about what's going to happen to these women, these mothers. Just absolutely incredible. It's going to be a nightmare for these people. And they are going to, they're going to be wanting to find anybody that believes in the King James Bible after the rapture. They're going to want to find any of them just so they can wring their necks, just so they can strangle them to death with their bare hands. Certainly they will be wanting to see Christians, well not Christians, but because the body of Christ leaves, but they'll want to see tribulation saints beheaded publicly in the time of Jacob's trouble. And you read, it's a great multitude that that's happening to. So, that's what I believe about that thing, and certainly we will see what happens.